if you wake up and you're like, okay, I got to find something to post today. It's like, you're thinking about it all wrong, right? Because now you're, you're living your life around social media versus living an awesome life that you share on social media. If you told me like, hey, you could, tomorrow you would have zero followers, but you would have the knowledge of, you know, you would have the knowledge of, of any three CE courses you can think of. Sorry, I, you guys are no longer following me because I would trade that in a heartbeat. All right, guys. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Go Live. I'm your host, Joshua Scott. Guys, this is episode 25. I got a very uh, special guest here, Dr. Brian Baliwas. Say hello, man. How's it going? Thanks for having me on. Other, uh, otherwise known as hash, or, uh, the handle at SF Dental Nerd, right? Yeah. <laughs> but now you're, I was, I was, you know, plugging in on Facebook here. I mean, your Facebook profile is just your normal name though. Like, like it's not, you know, you know what's order. interesting is I don't even know if I have like a, a, a like an official Facebook page. I, I, I was one of the first, my first Facebook page was uh, when it was only open to universities and UC Davis, I think was like the 13th one. Oh my so God. I've always been in social media, but I took it down cause it just got so crazy. But I do have like a secret one that I used to creep and yeah. it's just my name. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. But I'm not very active. Yeah. I appreciate you being on today. I know you're you're in California, so I mean, it's, we're going live here on the East Coast at one o'clock, but it's what nine a.m. Uh, ten a.m. Ten, ten o five right now. I can do math for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco, give us a little just kind of update. I mean, obviously, California's been one of the states that has been harder hit, you know, with COVID. And so, how how's the summer been? How's the practice been? All that. Yeah, you know, if you told me that an asteroid was headed towards San Francisco or actually just Earth and that, you know, things weren't looking great, for, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be like, oh, yeah, just tack that on to 2020. 2020. Yep. Right now, you know, with COVID, um, you know, this city takes its precautions. Um, there, there's not a lot going on. Things are still kind of shut down. There are restaurants that are open and, and people kind of are doing outside seating, no indoor seating. Okay. Um, but now, I mean, I don't know if you, you've seen the news, now it's, it's fires. I mean, our entire state is just on fire. Um, I was up in Reno hanging out with some dental people the other week, and all of a sudden I started getting text messages from people saying, hey, are you okay? I know you're in Reno. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? And they're like, check their news. And the news literally said, there is a fire tornado or fire NATO in, Re in Reno. And Seriously. so- I mean, it's, it's been crazy. The, the sky is kind of filled with smoke right now. I don't know. We're just trying yeah. to get through it. Yeah, no, I, um, I was actually supposed to do a Napa Valley trip here in about three weeks, like Labor Day weekend uh, with sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And a couple of weeks ago, we just kind of were like, you know what, you can't, uh, none of the vineyards are open unless there's outside, you know, like seating. None of the restaurants are open except if it's outside. We were like, let's just pause. But now, like, yeah, we couldn't even probably go because of fires. So, you know, if it wasn't for the smoke, I would say, no, you need to go. Yeah. Because, um, you know, my girlfriend and I have been looking for different ways. I mean, you can't stay at home. I mean, just from a mental, psychological standpoint, you got to go do something. But you also want to be safe. And um, so we were always looking for different little adventures to kind of get out of the city. Yeah. And I got to say, Napa, we went up to Napa maybe a month ago, and it was great. There's not a lot of people up there. They're really practicing social distancing. A lot of the uh, the wineries are open. They have tons of outdoor seating. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought it was cool. Oh, was cool, cool. Now, are you are you a wine guy? You know, I dabble. As in, you know, I I practice with Adam Miller, who who is always quick to kind of go here, try out this bottle. I have a case of it. Um, there's a bunch of people on Instagram, believe it or not, who I've connected with, who have got me into. Um, wine, it's a slippery slope though, because I'm, the moment you taste good wine, you're like, oh, that's why that wine is bad. And yeah. um, wine's not cheap. Yeah. No. You know what not. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't yeah, know if you're an NBA tough. I don't know if you're an NBA fan or not, but just watching this restart, I was, I was watching the Lakers game last night and they're playing against Portland and they were talking about CJ McCollum on the, on the Portland Trailblazers shipped in or, or came, arrived to the bubble with 85 bottles of red wine 
for you know to just lock himself in during this playoff time and these guys i mean lebron james has got his like assistant that travels with his wine like it's it's no joke so. yeah and, and you know he's not drinking like Minaj. you know what i mean uh, like i'm <laughs> sure he's got some crazy going on in there yeah i don't even think they look at it if it's under you know a hundred bucks a bottle for sure probably i mean that's probably not even close but yeah um hey man tell me about so you guys here's the other like fun fact it's probably not fun at all but you guys you're about a year a little over a year into this practice yeah so i mean you <laughs> i know when you started this you there the, you know the thought of getting shut down within a year because of a pandemic was just <laughs> yeah so, I mean, t- walk walk me through that like the startup process it's it's four four oh five aesthetic dental group it's, it's yeah four fifty. 450. I'm sorry. I'm dyslexic too, but man, I can't. No, you're good. No, that, this is the asteroid comment because it's like everything that, that, I mean, as new practice owners, just things have just been thrown at us. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So we took over this practice. Um, Adam and I were supposed to, you know, we'd meet every Sunday and we're like, you know, we really want to get something going. We thought about doing a startup and um, we were both teaching at the school at the time. And one of the people there connected us with one of her former students who practice in this practice that I'm sitting in right now. And she said, you know, he is not doing well. He's actually sick and he's looking for some associates. He doesn't know if he wants to be practicing any longer. So we kind of went in, um, Adam worked here for a while, check things out. It's an awesome practice. Um, you can actually look him up. He was, um, if you look up the name Alan Maloof, the first thing that'll pop up is, you know, his um, obituary that was written in the SF Chronicle and they refer to him as the dentist of the stars. Wow. He's got a lot of high end clientele, um, big people throughout the city. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a great practice to take over. Um, unfortunately, you know, he was supposed to make a full recovery and enjoy his retirement and go off. And he's got this apartment in New York that he'd always talk about, but, um, his multiple myeloma came back and he actually ended up passing away um, a few months into us taking over. Okay. And so that kind of sped up me kind of going into the practice. Um, So we had to deal with that. That's when we learned that a lot of the, you know, he was a a Delta um, provider and, you know, we're not in network with Delta at our previous office. And so we all of a sudden, you know, said, you know what, I guess we're dealing with a Delta transition overnight. And so we had to deal with that through our practice ownership. Um, it's just been nonstop. We've had some employment stuff, um, in terms of, you know, old team members who were pretty loyal to, to, to him. And, and, you know, with practice transitions, it's really tough because you've got to have, I mean, just in any practice, you've got to have people who, who believe in you and believe in your philosophy and believe in your dentistry. And if that's not there, then you're going to have some, some issues. So we've, dealt with those transitions, excuse me, those transitions. And, um, yeah, it's just nonstop. It's kind of like learning how to swim by being thrown in the pool. Yeah. 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 And then your practice shuts down for three months. You take out some government loans. Um, you figure out a way to pay yourself. Um, but things have been good. I mean, we've kept up the numbers. Um, we we have a bigger vision. I think that's important. I think you're somebody as well, especially with all those books back there. It's like, you know, it's not about the short term. It's about having like a long play. Yeah. And so yeah. no matter what happens to anybody this year, you're going to get through it as yeah. long as you have like a goal. For sure, man. Whenever I'm talking to startups, um, I was actually on the phone briefly last night with a, with a current client. He's a periodontist, but started a GP practice that opens. Um, it, it opened post COVID, but pre riots in downtown Columbus. And like two days after he opened, he had to shut the whole thing down because of all the rioting and the damage and then opened another perio practice on the other end of town. And, and it's, and I was just like, you're going to look back and there's going to be this amazing story of like getting through this. And, and I know it's tough. And he's, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing yoga, man, just to like get my mind in a right spot. Cause he's like, it's tough. And I'm like, yeah, you know, but there's going to be an amazing story. What's going to be cool though is like on the other side of it, people are going to see you with all these like amazing practices and go, wow, you're, you're amazing. All this. And they're going to have no idea what it took to get through that. There's always going to be something, you know what I mean? I used to think that in life, there's this destination I had to get to like one of these days, I'm going to be an adult and I'm going to have a home and I'm going to be doing this. And, And then life somehow just pauses where you're just like living the dream. Yeah. And I think that it's just more of like, ebbs and flows and you're just constantly kind of moving up and having 
this sounds crazy, but it's like, I want bigger problems. You know, yeah. I know some people who own multiple practices and had to deal with a lot more than I did with, with the one, um, yeah, I think it's about it's kind of setting yourself up and just accepting the fact that there's always going to be challenges. How do you keep that like front of mind, that whole kind of journey concept? Like just you personally, what do you do to just keep your mindset right? We have a team meeting going on right now with our consultant in the other room. And okay. it's actually, we just brought this up. And I think the big thing is sometimes you just have to step back and celebrate the small victories. You yeah. know, it's yeah. really easy to kind of go, oh my God, look at all the stuff that's happened. And you know, here's this, this and that. And, and I can't believe this, but it's like, if you get through one step of it, right? Like for us, you know, something as small as finding a company in Texas that repurposed their leather factory to making reusable medical gowns okay. and ordering those and that solving our gown situation. Yeah. Like that's crazy. But you know what? It took us a, like a little bit of researching, looking around, we found it. That's one problem that we solved and that's a small victory. And so like all these little small victories, you know, like securing a PPP loan, mm -hmm. um, putting together hygiene protocols. So your hygienists are comfortable enough to come back and trust that you're doing everything. Like all of these little things are awesome. And if you add them up, it's greater than the challenge or the speed bump or the hurdle that, that, you're facing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, for sure. And I, gosh, I love that you said that. Cause I think that whole thought of celebrating the, the little wins, cause most dentists and business owners, I mean, we can be type a high driven personalities and like, we just don't even think like that. And so, and I know like in this whole, okay, you take the last eight months, like you're shut down for two or three months and now we're, everybody's kind of super busy, you know, working extra hours and all that. And who's really taking time to go, like, hey, let's celebrate some small wins through this. Like, it's important. Yeah, I think just from a mental standpoint, you got to just say like, all right, we're here, you know? Yeah. Now, so, okay, I would imagine San Francisco's pretty highly competitive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard a rumor that there's, there's a lot of dentists in your building. Yeah. Is that true? So my previous, and I still work there a few days a week because I don't have the room to bring those patients over here. I guess okay. that's a good problem to have. But that building I worked at is 490 Post. And I want to say there's like 65 dentists in that 17-story building. And it's two blocks away. And so you walk two blocks to this building. And this building, I, I think last count, was in the 140 range of wow. dentists. Yeah, on 26 floors. But that, that concept of competition is an interesting one because everybody always asks that, like, isn't it saturated? I mean, I think in the end, you, just, you have to separate yourself and you have to make yourself distinct. And, and, you know, when you say, oh my God, I can't believe there's 140 dentists in this one building. When patients come find me or find any dentist in this building for that matter, they're not walking through the building and going door to door going, Hmm, is this where I want to go? Right. Hmm, how about here? You know? So to that patient, they might know that there's a lot of dentists in the building, but they're not aware of them. Right. So it's not, it's, it's not like opening up like in the Midwest, if you open up a practice and you open up a practice right across the street, it's like, Oh my God, that's competition. And now when you walk, you kind of look over, you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like the gas station effect, like gas stations always position themselves next to each other so that they can compete. I don't think it's like that. I think because of that, I focus more on the marketing uh, in terms of um, social media. Um, internal referrals is our, my biggest source of um, patients. Yeah. Just kind of like that wow factor so, so that when patients come through and they come in for that new patient appointment, they leave and go, I love it. And, and this happens more often than not. They go, I've never had an, an exam like that or a dental appointment like that. That was great. And that's an invitation. I say, that's awesome. Like if you know anybody else who would enjoy that kind of experience, you know, please let them know, like send them our way. We're always looking for new patients, great patients like yourself who, who want to um, receive this type of care. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I would, so here's the deal though. Like if, if you, like, let's say you worked with a demographic company on, you know, starting your practice and all that. I mean, there, there is just no way they're going, they're going to be like, 
do not do anything here. Right. So, I mean, but how do you, so when you, when you hear about demographics and dentist per capita ratios and all that stuff and people really basing where they go to launch a startup around that because of competition, like what, what's your advice? Like if you want to, you're starting your own practice, like you're looking to start. Yeah. Here's the interesting thing is if you're borrowing money, I'm going to take something, I'm going to go way out in left field here. Okay. If you're borrowing money to start a practice from a bank, that bank's not stupid. And they, they, they do their research and they have underwriters and they analyze cash flow, right? So if, unless you're buying this practice outright with your own money, they're not going to take that bet on you if they don't see it working. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if you're struggling to find money to create your startup or to buy a practice, then it's not the bank being jerks. They're, that's like a red flag. You need to kind of look and say, why isn't this cash flow happening with this practice? And so that being said, pre COVID banks were just throwing money at dentists. And it didn't matter where you were, you know, um, buying a practice or starting one. So I would say that like, you know, yes, there's a lot of competition here. You can think about the demographics, but San Francisco is a pretty transient population. I mean, you get a lot of people moving into the city, a lot of people moving out. It's, it's a new opportunity for you to kind of get new patients. You know, it's not like a place where people, and there are people like this, but for the most part, it's not a place where people are, you know, have been going to their dentist for 40, 50 years, all their life. And if they have, you know, I, I mean, there's just not a lot of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. my, my question that I ask on most new patients, I pop in, I wash my hands. We have a little small talk and I'm always like, so where are you originally from? Yeah. Right. You know, and you wouldn't say that if you were working in a small town somewhere, you, they'd look at you and go, what do you mean where I'm originally from? I'm from here or, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that conversation of competition is interesting because for me, it's always been like, if you're going to go into an area and be the same old dental practice that's in that area, then yeah, you're going to have competition and yes, go do your demographic research and all that. But there's so much opportunity to go into an area, even highly saturated and just do something different, be different. And if you can, if you can do that, then you'll stand out. Then I'm like, you know, you can compete for sure. So yeah. Looking back year one, what do you think was, what are you most proud of? Ooh, that's such a good question. I would say I'm most proud of the systems we've implemented. So Adam and I have some bigger, you know, dreams than just owning a practice and kind of being um, employees for ourselves within this little partnership that we've built. Um, we like kind of taking issues or problems that we've run into and trying to streamline and and create the way kind of like a standard operating procedure right okay. like everybody talks about sops and and i'm really proud that we've really tackled that i know some practices who have just you everybody has their little projects in the back of their mind like oh i can't wait till we get our ordering in line or or we should do this system well i think the big advantage of having two of us is that there's always somebody working on something oh, cool. so last night for example um we kind of streamlined our Invisalign procedures. So we have a scanner, people get scanned, we take photos, we upload them. And then now what do we do from there? So our procedure is now, okay, we'll schedule a zoom call. We'll share the clin check with them. We kind of explain things, answer their questions. We kind of get a vibe of see where they're at. If they're interested, then we move on and we say, all right, um, we'll have Samantha up front, send you the financial agreement for that. Well, now where does that come from? So now we made a PDF for her that fills out what kind of, you know, it has all the patient information, what kind of Invisalign plan it is, our payment options. And that way they can send that over and they've got all the information financially to make the decision. And once that's signed, then we can approve the clin check and get these liners made and it triggers, you know, the appointment being made. So we never want to just get by as in like, Oh yeah, that just happens because it's a bunch of people in our office who know how to do it and they get it done because what ends up happening is if you lose someone, if somebody gets sick, if somebody quits, if somebody moves, I never want it to be like, Oh, well that was something that Samantha knew, knew how to do. It's like, no, no, no. 
this is how things are done at the office. It helps with training. It helps with um, temps who come in to work and it helps with um, just the overall flow. And so I'm really proud that we've got a bunch of these systems in place. Do you see this whiteboard behind me? Yeah, yeah. And we've got, I'm tucked away in the lab right now because everybody's kind of <laughs> uh, doing this little meeting out front. Um, we locked in our ordering. And so now, you know, if somebody needs something, somebody wants something, it goes up here. We have manufacturer codes in a master document on, on every computer that they can look. So that way, you know, if somebody needs cotton rolls, they're not just ordering random cotton rolls. We have certain ones that we like, that we order, that we get for a certain price. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about systems in my mind. And I think that'll pay dividends in the long run. Yeah, I love that. I think systems, when you can get like that, I think it actually gives you the flexibility to be creative and surprising and, and kind of create those moments within the system as well too. Um, so I think systems actually give you a ton of freedom. Like people think yeah. it's restrictive, but it gives you a ton of freedom. Um, when you look back on this last year, and, and we'll, this is kind of pushed COVID to the side, that may or may not be your answer, but what do you think the single biggest challenge was? Hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, COVID was, was a pretty tough challenge, but again, you know, what, what can you do about that? It's, it's something that you couldn't really tackle. I'd say our biggest challenge was we, we had a practice transition. So we took over a practice and when that happens, you take over the equipment, uh, the patients, but also the team. And so I think our biggest challenge was, was trying to transition that team into really believing in us and actually becoming leaders. And um, one of our, the things that I don't think we did quick enough was just set the tone and say like, hey, look, here's how things are, or these are non-negotiables for us. Are you on board? Hmm. Um, there's this really cool book called Radical Candor. Yeah. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah. And I wish I had read it before yeah. we transitioned. Um, and, and if you're not familiar with the book, it's an awesome book, and it just talks about how to speak um, to, to anyone really. Right. Would you agree? It's, it's, yeah. it's just how to, how to speak your mind, but also not be, um, an asshole. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but, but <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's just like, you want to care for people. You want to have the best intentions when you speak to them, but you also have to be direct and clear. And I don't think we were necessarily at the start. So I think that's yeah. been our biggest challenge is just managing employees. Yeah, that's cool. I think that that book, wasn't that the one where it talks about, it's like rock stars and superstars. It, it was yeah. like the difference between like a rock star was like somebody who did their job, like really their role really, really well. They're a rock star in it. But then you have superstars that actually want to like be more influential within the organization. Yeah. It, this one was the one that talked about like when you speak to someone, you can yeah. care about them or you can not care about them. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then there's the other access to this graph is you could be passive or aggressive and yeah. really the worst thing you can do is not care about someone and also be really passive because now in terms of let's say i'm a boss speaking to an employee if i'm passive they never know what to do yeah, yeah and i also yeah. don't care so i don't really tell them right whereas the opposite it sounds really bad somebody who's aggressive and doesn't care but at least that person because they're aggressive and telling you like no you need to do this. At least the employees have a chance of doing what they need to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think I was thinking something different, but that's the cover right there. And you're that's right, it. he's got your graph, your little access on it. So that's cool, awesome. Yeah, it's a really awesome book. Um, I, I suggest it for anyone who's, who's looking to take on staff or be a boss and not be a boss, but like literally have employees yeah. Yeah. And, um, no, no I think it's a good read. Are you, are you a book reader? Do you have to like kind of force yourself? I used to read a lot of books. Now yeah. I've transitioned into listening and yeah. I want to go back into reading cause I think I get more out of it, mm. but yeah. um, I think it's important. I, yeah. mean, I have a, if you're ever bored, find my Instagram. There's a, there's a highlight on there called books and it's got a ton of different books that have helped out over the years. That's cool. I, yeah, I don't actually know how you become a bit, how you are a business owner without reading in some capacity. It's just, 
it's just tough and it's so helpful, but, um, okay. So, so Instagram, let, let me talk about that a little bit. You're, you're a, a bit of an Instagram influencer. I, I'd love to get your take on that. I mean, you, right now you're sitting at about 33,000 followers and in the dental world, that's probably fair to say you're, uh, an influencer. Uh, how did you get there? How do you feel about it? Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Cause I, I, you know, my journey, a, a few people have heard this already, but I, I started posting memes and funny things and, and I was so focused on trying to get followers. I'd, you know, post things. And, and if it didn't get a certain amount of likes, I take it down, try to find something. My, my page has really transitioned. And, and while I'm thankful for everything Instagram has done for me, you know, to tell you the truth, it's helped me build a practice. It's helped me market to patients. It's helped me connect with mentors. It's helped me connect with dental companies. Um, social media is just a tool and, and what you do with it um, can open up. I mean, you can open up a, an avenue of endless possibilities, Yeah. but it's interesting. We were having this conversation earlier. I, I hate the word influencer because I went to dental school and I'm really passionate about dentistry. And so I'm actually, I don't know, focused more on my dentistry and the practice than I am on my social media. Yeah. Which sounds weird, right? I mean, I get a lot of people who kind of message me and they're, and they're like, oh, I want to get started. Like, how do I get followers? How do I get this? And I'm, and, and I'm always like, well, you know what? You should probably get really good at one thing or something or be passionate about one thing and then use social media to share it, yeah. right? Yeah. Rather than being really good at social media and then that's it. Unless you're getting paid for it somehow. I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that take because I think um, actually your account, like what I like about your account, it's one of the more um, like, like I hang with it clinically, um, which which I can't with with a lot, you know, to, to be honest. And um, yours, I just you're speaking from just a different perspective. I don't know. But like I actually like following what you're talking about and it helps me learn the clinical side of dentistry as well. So it's it's super interesting. Like it's approachable, I guess. Yeah, I, I think a lot of that too, though, I, I, I look at it as no different from a conversation, right? Like something happens to me in the day, I go, oh, I got to post about this because this really bothers me or, oh my God, I love this. I got to post about this Yeah. rather than the opposite, which is what I was talking about is putting social media first. It's like, if you wake up and you're like, okay, I got to find something to post today. It's like, you're thinking about it all wrong, right? Because now you're, you're living your life around social media versus living an awesome life that you share on social media. So again, like my big focus, like if I could trade it all in, like if you told me like, hey, you could, tomorrow you would have zero followers, but you would have the knowledge of, you know, you would have the knowledge of, of any three CE courses you can think of sorry, I, you guys are no longer following me because I would trade that in a heartbeat. Like yeah. Yeah. I went to dental school. I want to be a good dentist. And in the end, um, this is probably going to be offensive to some influencers, but like, you know, 20 years down the road, I'd love to be remembered for my clinical work or for a case or for a technique or something mm -hmm. rather than a song I sang on social media or a dance that I did or you know what I mean? Or like a meme I posted yeah. and, and yes, I post memes because it's, it's, it's entertaining to me, but I think there's more to it than that. And I think yeah. we need to focus on that. Otherwise we lose sight of why we're on social media to begin with. Yeah. I think those are super wise words. And I think that authenticity comes through in your account, which is why people love it and, and interact with you. Um, yeah. Cause it's, it's the other, the other side of it is you, you can almost do whatever you want because of the sheer numbers. Like if, like if you launched a, like a course, like your own course, uh, you know, like did a, you know, 15 person hands on course, dude, it would sell out like tomorrow, <laughs> you know? Um, so like you could go that route or it's, it's, it's that concept of like Kim Kardashian launching, uh, an app. Did you ever see her app, like the game she launched there yeah. for a brief? Yeah. And it's like, dude, it did like $6 billion or something stupid like that in revenue. And it's like, it's just because she has so many followers. It doesn't even mean it's a good game. So I, I like that, you know? Yeah. But you, you know, what's interesting is, and, and that's the approach that some people take are taking right now. They're like, look, I'm going to try to rack up as many followers and then cash in. Right. Yeah. It's interesting though, because you really have to 
for, I believe you have to have substance, right? Like you have to have something to share. And, and it's interesting because sometimes people will message me and they're like, Hey, what cement do you recommend in this situation? And my answer to them usually is like, Hey, by the way, like you should reach out to this person and you should reach out to this person and you should take this course because that's where I learned this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, don't use something because it looks sexy on an influencer Instagram page, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. It's just, I, I, there's this weird thing going on with social media right now where it's, it's becoming pretty prolific and, and, and really being ingrained in our society. And I don't know if it's, if it's because of COVID yeah, and that, you know, everybody's at home, everybody's using it, but like, uh, rules are starting to get established and things are starting to happen that we wouldn't expect like, like cancel culture even, or like call out culture, right? Yeah. Like how often now I guarantee right now, if I made a false statement about you, yep. right? Right now, I just posted it. You would get so many messages of people going, I can't believe you. That's ridiculous. Before they'd actually look up who you were, what you did, what was said in the situation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And because of that, the responsibility through social, it, it, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so I'm really kind of trying to take a step back. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. Yeah. But um, for the people who have been following me, I've been posting a lot less personal stuff. Um, because I, I, I haven't said this on a podcast yet, but I almost live in fear. Okay. Um, like, like I'm one post away from, from being the next like canceled person on the internet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You remember that Dennis who posted the lion photo? Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And it's like, yeah, I kind of agree. Like, what are you doing hunting lions? But I mean, yeah, his well, whole life like turned upside down off of one post. I know. And, and the thing is like, everything just feels so volatile right now. Like it's hard yeah. to, to say something. And, and, and then people are using social media. I, I had this, talk with my team a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I, I don't think one more opinion on social media is going to bring peace to any type of situation. Um, and, and just cause you have social media, doesn't even mean you have a voice, uh, you know? So like people are like posting opinions, like in, in comments, like they have a voice and there's just so much, whether it's, you know, politics or medical COVID or, you know, medicine versus entrepreneurs right now, or, uh, or just social distancing and civil rights and mass. It's like so many volatile topics out there. Yeah, I think I think the danger is that it's taking the place of education. Mm. It's becoming our education. And so that's true for the dental materials question I, I posed earlier, right? Like what cement should I use? It's like, yeah. uh, I don't know if my go-to is messaging somebody on Instagram to find out what I should be putting in somebody's mouth, right? And then now you look at um, with COVID, uh, the spread of misinformation and vaccines and drugs to use where we're really leaning on it for our information rather than going to trusted sources. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because of it, we don't even know which sources to trust really. I mean, it's, it's really starting to be weird. It is. It is for sure. Uh, one of the things I, I, I love that you post about, um, are, you're a bit of a sneaker head. <laughs> a little bit. I've got yeah. some really ugly shoes on right now. Yeah. What are you, what are you wearing right now? I've got, I've got these, um, these, these foam runners. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those are, are, are those, um, are those Kanye? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I, I, the only reason I'm wearing, I'm not seeing patients today. It's just a team day. Yeah. Like let's, let's introduce this. Let's see what happens. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like shoes. Yeah. 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 What's uh what's your favorite pair right now? Oh, or what's your go-to? Like if, if do you, do you have like, um, what do you have the most of or what? What gets your attention? I have a lot of Yeezys. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of like Air Max 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Jordan 1s. Yeah. 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 I like those. Oh, yeah. Now, are you a sneaker person? I am. Yeah. I, um, well, right now, I don't know if you can see these. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those, those are actually some Air Force 1s that kind of wheat, wheat colorway. Um, but yeah. I think, uh, gosh, one day you put up a pair of Jordan 1s and I was, it was so, it was funny. I was outside. I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh yeah, those are the court purples. Like I, I just saw those drop and you're like, 
bro, they're blue. And I'm like, <laughs> so I go back, I look, I'm like, oh, you're completely right. I was like, my bad. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it's interesting because there's this like movement going on on social media right now where everybody's kind of sharing their, their, what shoes they're wearing. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the kind of fun aspect of social media I do enjoy is like connecting with people. I know it sounds silly, yeah. but like to know that you're wearing Air Force Ones and you, you, it's just a, a cool way to kind of like, I don't know, say hello. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like dropping a line, like I'm going to post this, here's this challenge or this hashtag. And you know what? Who am I going to tag today? You know, who haven't I interacted with? Oh um, yeah. It's just, we connect with so many people. So it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. And sometimes it's over fun things like sneakers. <laughs> For sure. I, I won't keep you on too much longer, but I want to talk about DIA, the, the Dental Influencer Alliance, because I know you've been a big part of that. That's actually where I, I think I was actually following you socially before that, but, but met you briefly there. I think it was right at the start of the, the event last year in December. Um, I had a great time. The event was amazing. And, and I wanted to kind of talk about a few things there, but tell me how that whole group got started. Yeah. I got a message from Blake implant compare. Um, and he was like, Hey, you know, we, are you bored of these conferences that you're going to? I'm like, yeah, they're kind of all the same. And when you go, I'm really kind of going because I want to run into like friends and mentors of mine and catch up. Right. Yeah. Um, those conferences used to be, this is my opinion. They used to be a place where people would meet once or twice a year and kind of get caught up. Right. Like you'd learn about new products, you learn about new techniques from the CE there, and then you catch up with your old dental school friends. Well, with social media and uh, the internet, these days, I don't go to conferences to learn about products. If anything, I already know about them because they, they have websites that's released. You can go learn about them. You go now to conferences and it's like, you kind of want to check things out. I, I feel like there's just not that need. So we decided to kind of switch up the conference and say, look, can we put together a conference where we're all kind of meeting up and that stuff is there to enhance our meetup, right? Almost like one big giant Insta meetup. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what, what developed. We ended up getting some really cool speakers uh, both years. I think we had some solid speakers. We had companies who were willing to support companies who are involved in social media as well and willing to share information and a conference was born and it's gotten more, more ridiculous every year. Um, last year we, you know, we knew that people would kind of go hard one night. So the next day we bought a bunch of Pedialyte and Advil and laid that out for everybody to, to, to use. And yeah, uh, my favorite moment was walking out for lunch and you guys kind of had this whole fire festival kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, theme going on too. And so, but walking out for lunch one day, like the doors open and there's these tables with just like white bread and cheese singles. And it was like, here's, here's <laughs> and everybody kind of stopped. It was like, Oh yeah, yeah. That's good. We thought it was funny, yeah. but yeah, with, with DIA, I know it got postponed this year. Um, I think that it's going to happen next year. I'm taking, um, a, a step back, um, implant MBA Shane, who's been hosting uh, Geo Periody. Okay. I don't know if you've seen that, that those no. games on Instagram. He'll be taking my spot. And again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, which is like, I just really want to uh, focus on my practice and my dentistry. Yeah. I'm really trying to nail that down. I mean, it, I kind of put the cart before the horse, in my opinion. You know, I, I can think of 20 different people who should have the follower account that I have who are amazing dentists who teach me every day when I share cases with them. Um, I want to be on the opposite end of that. I, I really want to do solid work. And, and right now people have probably noticed I'm not sharing a lot of cases. I'm racking them up. I've got, I'm, I take tons of photos and, and I'd like to put together like a, like a follow-up yeah. um, presentation one day and, and share information, share what's worked for me and what hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important. No, that's cool. I, gosh, you guys did such a good job with it. And I think that that, it, that concept is so needed. I remember sitting down, um, very first day, I mean, this was last year, but the very first day, very first session. And I mean, you've got like, like pre-session, you've got like unedited Drake, like playing, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I pushed the envelope a little on the first year. Like it was crazy. Like really you put together a playlist and then all of a sudden it was like F word this. Yeah. And, yeah. 
and we were like, ooh, like maybe we should tone it down. But then everybody was like, oh, this is great. So we just left it. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it. And just being so Instagram forward, and even your speakers, like bringing those guys in. Um, I don't know if you know Israel Putterman very well. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, he's-, he's I'm going to go take their course in January. Okay. Um, I was supposed to take it a few months ago, but obviously a pandemic hit. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's a client of, of ours and such a cool guy. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was just fun. All right, man. Well, look, before, uh, what, what do you think? Here's an interesting question. Let me drop this on you. What do you think the future of conferences is going to be? Like just kind of post COVID. You know, even let's say COVID never happened. My answer would probably be the same. Okay. I think that dental companies and, and the, these people who put on these conferences need to change something about it. Yeah. Otherwise it's not going to be around for long. And what I mean by that is, um, they, they need to provide some sort of value, right? Cause again, like I said, people used to go to these conferences to learn, well, there's online CE now and information spreads really quickly. So we don't need that. They used to go to learn about new products and materials. They have websites, so we don't really need that. And then they used to go to like meet friends and old colleagues face to face. Well, I got to say like with social media and, and, people already connect. It's like when I see people, I already kind of know what they've been doing throughout the year. It's nice to connect with people, yeah. but I just don't know if that need is there anymore. And so what I'd say is, is they need to change things up and make it a little bit more exciting. And, and now with COVID, I mean, I just don't know what'll happen in terms of large gatherings. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, and, and those things aren't cheap to put on. I mean, DIA was, Right. 200 something people the first year and over 500 the second year. Um, holy cow. Like I was in charge of AV and to get those two screens in there with mics in like the breakout rooms and whatnot. I'm not joking. It was close to 30 grand. That's yeah. $30,000 just to have screens up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we saved a lot of money because people volunteered. Thank you to everyone volunteered to speak, but imagine now having to pay those speakers their honoraria. I mean, it gets a little crazy. So yeah. I don't know. I just don't see, I don't know what I get out of it other than meeting up with friends. Right. And yeah. so I think some of the smaller ones like that are built around organizations and associations, AACD, um, A, AAED, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, the aesthetic dentistry one, restorative Academy, those ones will continue. Yeah. But if you think about it, some of those aren't based, especially like Restorative Academy, it's not based around a bunch of companies trying to sell you something. It's based around people who are actually trying to better themselves dentally. Yeah. And so I think that, that large gatherings of, of dentists are going to have to be built around some sort of similar interest rather than, hey, here's the meeting for Northern California. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? You know? Yeah. No, I, I think it, you're right. It's, it's gotta be like the experience, like what's the experience here. And I think that's what you guys did so well, whether it was the, the, the after party on whatever it was Saturday or, um, w which was crazy, you know, or, or just even a little bit. Yeah. A little bit, probably no more vodka ice sleds, uh, post COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but even some of like, and I don't know if you guys did this on purpose, but some of those breakouts, you know, you've got like Israel Putterman who's got, you know, like 35,000 followers and he's doing a breakout session and there's so many people that want to get in there and you guys were like, well, if you didn't sign up, no, you can't get in. But then people were like, yeah, we're just going to sit on the floor. And like, we're all like, I'm up in the front row, like sitting on the floor with five people like listen, And it's just like that whole type of experience was, it was just fun. You know, it was just different. Yeah, like you wanted to go in there and listen. So yeah. that was the big thing is there's always this disconnect where at these conferences, speakers want to get paid to speak. Um, attendees want CE and companies want to sell you stuff. Right. And then the companies pay the people to speak so that they can tell the attendees when they learn to go buy things from the companies. It was like this cyclical thing. And we just said, what if we restructure that so that it's completely different where attendees want to hang out with each other and want to be there and want to learn not to get CE. They want to learn and they want to learn about products from the companies and the companies aren't there trying to sell. They're trying to teach 
They're trying to educate people about their products. And then you have instructors or lecturers who aren't there to just collect their own area. They're there to share knowledge and be mentors. Yeah. And that's such a better ecosystem. Yeah. Than, than the other, because what ends up happening is with the other, if you take away one of those, you're done for. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. I never even thought about it like that. That's interesting. All right, man. Look, last question. Friday night after a long week, well, tonight after a long week, what are you guys doing? You and your girlfriend, you guys, you're hanging out. What do you, what are you ordering like for dinner? What are you drinking? <laughs> to just relax. Uh, we've been really big on the sushi kick. I think I would argue that San Francisco has some of the best sushi yeah. in this, well, in this country. Sure. You know, in the, in the world, obviously Japan has some awesome sushi, but I mean, there's some places here that rival it. Yeah. Um, that's my go-to there. Okay. Um, drinks wise, we've just been cracking tons of wine. Okay. Um, because of Adam, Adam gave us a bottle of Eller's. Eller's uh, estate cab. And so we went up there when we were in Napa, picked up a couple bottles and man, it is some good stuff. Yeah. I love, I love, um, I love wines that you can open that kind of taste a little different as you progress throughout, you know, yeah. kind of pour yourself. Adam gave us specific instructions. He was like, pour yourself a little taste, taste it, let it sit, go cook dinner. And, you know, kind Come of, back to it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of fun. So yeah, we've been on this wine kick lately. Um, that's cool. Are you a Cabernet uh, drinker by preference? You know, I like any balanced, easy to drink wine. Okay. That sounds crazy, but like, you know, everybody's like, oh, I like this varietal or, yeah. I mean, you can probably, if, if you give me a really nice Pinot or a really nice Barolo or a really nice cat, I, I don't care. Like if it's, if it's tasty and, and just like, complex i'm for it yeah yeah you know um do you know you probably do gary vaynerchuk gary yeah. okay so he has a wine club i get it every month it's 65 how is it it's so good wow okay it's 65 dollars, which is like no big deal you typically some months i only get two bottles but most months i get three and when you add them up they're usually somewhere between 120 to 150 dollars in value um, and it's just super solid. It's so like this month it was a, it was a Crianza from Spain and a Toscana from Italy and a Chardonnay from Santa Barbara and just all stuff you're not going to find at your local shop and just really well done. So I used to watch him when I think it was called wine library Yeah, yeah, yeah. on YouTube and he yeah. would taste wines. He'd wrap them up in a brown bag, right. And do blind taste tests with wine. I thought that yeah. was so cool. Yeah, it is for sure. So that's, I, I actually, I signed up for it twice. Once in my wife's name too. So we get two, we get two boxes every month just cause it's that good, but. Interesting. All right. I'm checking it out. Yeah. Fish. Check it out. So, cause especially that, like some people, if you just like Cabernet, I'm like, don't do that. But if you like kind of all kinds of different stuff, if it's just well-made and balanced, I'm like, that's a good, good deal. So I can dig it. Cool. All right, man, I'm gonna let you go. Hey, where's, if somebody wants to connect with you online, where's the best place? Uh, sadly just dm me on instagram it's sf dental nerd yeah. um you can email me shoot me an email it's it's ballywas dds at gmail um i'm willing to, to share whatever i think that that going through this um first year i've learned a ton and i think you've seen a couple of posts where i've been sharing some of our big purchases whether or not we liked them yeah uh, but yeah i get a lot of questions about that I'll, i don't know much but i i you can learn from some of the mistakes I'm making. How about that? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I oh, mean, I appreciate your time. I know that you're super busy, but get back to your team meeting, enjoy your weekends. And uh, yeah, man, hopefully maybe next time I'm out there or something, I'll hit you up. We'd love to. Please do. Yeah. Love to yeah, connect uh, person again sometime. We'll go get sushi. Let's do that. Yeah. hundred percent. Sure. Cool. All right, bro. I'll see you. Thanks. Thanks, man. <laughs>